Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So like always, I'm having to give like loads of disclaimers um, at the start of my video. Number one, if you can hear the rain, I am so sorry. I still don't have like a filming space in my house and the only way I can actually get light inside is by opening the window and it's currently raining so you'll probably be hearing rain and stuff like this happening so i apologize in advance but i really wanted to film this video because it's been super super requested and i don't know i'm bored in the house and in the house bored because it's raining and i I'm not doing anything. So if you watched my last video, that was like when I announced that I'd moved to Korea, even though I've been living in Korea for maybe almost a year now. After that video, I got a lot of DMs on Instagram. And if you want to follow me, that's me right there. If you have any questions or just want to chat, hit me up. I'm like literally always on my phone. So uh, I had a lot of people, especially well, actually mainly girls asking me about Korea and life in Korea. So I've had a lot of you guys ask me like, okay, Korea is very safe. Like the people seem to be nice. You said people are nicer to you here, but have you had any like weird experiences or like people being strange because you're foreign? And the thing is, it's just men. It's, it's the men. <laughs> But I'm not saying this, like, all Korean men are this way, like, disclaimer, this is my experience. These things have happened, like, throughout, like, almost a year, so it's not like I step outside and I have a creepy man jumping at me from a dark alley or something, you know? So I just want to preface this, this is not in no way for me saying this is what your experience or this is what Korean guys are like, and this is just my experience and... Uh, you guys wanted to know weird funny strange creepy experiences so here it is okay let's let's be real I've seen a lot of girls come to Korea with this idea that you know like I'm gonna find myself an oppa like it's gonna be great he's gonna be like the guys in the drama and then they get bitterly disappointed or even worse they get taken advantage of because for some reason they don't see the red flags so the first story actually happened when i came to visit by myself in like june-ish time and at that point i was staying in a goshi tell and if you don't know what goshi tell is it's literally just like well mostly students use it because it's really really cheap i think it costs like maybe 10 15 dollars per day to rent like it's a teeny 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 shoebox room um but it's really good if you're here on the budget so i one night decided it was like 2 a.m and you know korea is pretty safe so i decided you know what i want to i want to get some snacks from the convenience store so i go downstairs go get my snacks as i'm walking towards the building i see a guy crouched like on the floor just outside and I'm like okay well like it's a Saturday night he's probably drunk like whatever pay him no mind I start walking upstairs the place I was staying at was like on the third floor so as I go up the first floor I can hear someone come up behind me from like downstairs so I'm like oh okay it's probably someone coming home like thought nothing of it like I turn around and look downstairs and I see it's the guy that I initially saw downstairs so I'm like okay I guess the guy lives in this building too because there's a women's floor and a men's floor above my floor I walk upstairs really slowly and that's something I have accepted about myself <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just very bad at any type of exercise, especially cardio. So I'm like struggling up these stairs and I can kind of feel this guy is starting to catch up to me. And I don't know about you guys, but I have like this weird sixth sense where I kind of am starting to feel like, okay, this is starting to be kind of weird. Let's hurry it up, increase my pace. And I start taking off my shoes. There's like a locker outside and I start typing in the code to my floor and once I do that I see the guy come up the stairs and I'm like okay no I have such a bad feeling I like quickly do it and my hands are shaking because I'm really nervous I open the door get inside close it he's literally right behind me and the thing about the locks in Korea is like all of the locks here are automated so when you close the door there's like a two second 
time slot where the door stays unlocked basically but then it locks itself so that happened but there's a button where you can press where it locks straight away so i type in go inside close the door press the button just out of like pure instinct literally a split second later he grabs the door handle to try and open the door okay just so you guys can get like a, an idea of what i mean if you guys don't know um this is what the locks tend to look like to unlock right so you open it and when you close it that's what i mean like it takes like a couple seconds for the lock to lock itself but what i did is i closed the door and then you can you can do it manually if you need to close it like straight away and that's what i did so the door was made of glass so i can literally see him and we made eye contact and he had his hand on the handle and so did i and i like step back and i was like this is not happening and i'm looking at him and he literally decides to just go upstairs so i'm like okay this maybe he's drunk and he thought my floor was his floor too and he realized what his mistake was and he went upstairs to his men's dorm so in the morning i spoke to the manager i told the female one and she asked me to come into this room where they have cctv i told her like the time it happened and they literally watched it and they were like okay yeah we'll that's not okay, we're gonna try and find out who this person is. So then the next day, I get a message from the mail manager, like this huge message saying, I'm so sorry that this happened to you, like very apologetic. And he goes on to tell me that the guy wasn't a resident in that building, so he had no reason to be there, especially at 2 a.m. And that he's been caught on CCTV before trying to like steal things. So I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> good to know. Honestly, besides this thing, that's the only time anyone has ever tried to follow me like to my actual address. So the thing to learn from this experience is definitely, even though Korea is super, super safe, like I still go outside at two, three, maybe 4 a.m. if I get the munchies to go grab something. But it's always good to like, you know, be vigilant and not have like this full sense of security because there's crazy people wherever you go. This isn't just for Korean guys, but I think in general, guys don't understand how creepy some of their behaviors can be. And because I <laughs> clearly don't look Korean, I tend to attract attention. Whether I like it or not, I stand out. And me, as a normal human with a functioning brain, I would think that approaching someone, especially from behind, in a dark alley at, at night, let's not even define the, the time, just at night, is not the best idea and doesn't give off the best impression. But for some reason, guys, like this has happened to me in other countries too, but here it happens a lot. The amount of times I've had guys like approach me and my friends in like dark alleyways when we're walking to like a restaurant or something. Um, Cause like the good restaurants tend to be kind of tucked away. But the amount of times we've been approached and them being like, oh, can I ask you a question? Like, no, if you've... <laughs> If you've ever been to like London or New York or any like big city, if someone approaches you in a dark alley and says, can I ask you a question? You're getting robbed. I always try and put myself in their shoes. Like if I saw a really cute guy in a dark alley, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I just wouldn't because I have the mental capacity to realize this is weird. So I remember like I had lived in Korea maybe for like two, three months and i was trying to meet up with one of my friends and she was in one of those like weird underground drinking places that i was trying to find so i'm <laughs> walking down this alley and quite honestly it's it's safe like i said it's relatively safe so i'm walking down there i'm on the phone to my friend and she's trying to describe where to go and this guy walks past me and i think nothing of him 10 seconds later i hear rapid footsteps like running towards me from behind me and i turn around 
and it's the guy who passed me like 10 seconds later he has his phone out ready to go like on the snow app and if you don't know what snow is it's like a photo taking app that like lets you edit yourself so you look good he had that shit ready to go puts up his hand ready to like take a picture and goes can i take a picture with you So another time, me and my friend went to like this drinking place and in Korea when you're drinking you eat too. You don't just drink which actually is kind of nice, like I like to line my stomach and not die. So we went to this place that's really popular. Usually when a restaurant or a drinking place is really really busy, you put your name down and you write down your phone number so that when a table clears, you can go somewhere else and they can call you to tell you that your table's ready. We were standing outside because my friend was having a smoke and we get approached by these two guys. The one guy spoke English quite well and he's like, yeah, I spent some time in the States. Like, find guys who just will approach you because they want to practice their English, which is fair enough. But then they're like, oh, it's so like, do you guys want to come drink with us inside? because we were standing outside the place we are trying to get in. We just weren't interested in them and we had other friends coming. We were just like, no, it's okay. It's like girls night, we don't want to. So they continued to talk to us because we're literally just standing outside waiting for our table to get free. So then the guy who runs the place, who knows my friend, actually comes outside instead of calling her. He comes outside because he sees us and he says, oh, um, come in, I think one table is about to clear out. We go inside and these two guys follow us inside. The guy who spoke English pushes past me, says to the guy who's like running the place and like determines who can sit where, and says to him in Korean, oh, like scrap their table for two. We want a table for four for all of us. He said this in Korean and I could understand what he was saying. And I literally looked at my friend and I was like, if we fucking have to sit with this guy, I'm going home right now. Like, I was so angry. So, so angry. Like, the audacity of this guy. Like, we literally told him, we don't want to sit with you. We don't want to drink with you. And he goes and cancels our table and tries to force us to sit with him. And so, again, we're literally just like, no, we don't want to sit with you. And we say to the guy, get us a table for two so angry at like the disrespect like okay you know we don't want to sit with you but you're just gonna enforce your will on us or something like so the guy who works there is like let me have a look again because your friend here told me to cancel your like part in the line for the table so you guys have to wait a little bit longer again i'm just like my eyes starting to twitch like i get whenever i get angry my eyes like start to twitch and i am getting ready to fight so this guy who cancelled our table is just like, oh, like if you guys don't want to wait, we actually have a table. <laughs> we have a table with our friends. Why don't you come sit with us? And I'm like, so you had a table all along, but you insisted on cancelling our table to sit with us? Like, and we're literally like, no, we don't. We don't want to. Finally leaves, goes and sits down. And then finally the guy in charge of the table is just like, okay, finally a table is free for you. Follow me. It's right over there. And where does he point at? By the guy's table. Like, literally. <laughs> the two, the table for two was literally next to his table of friends and him. So I'm just like, I think the universe wants me to just go home right now. So we go and sit down. Homeboy sees us sit down, grabs his chair, scoots over to us, and he goes, cheers, with his drink. And I'm just... I, at this point, I'm so angry. I have reached like sereneness, like I'm calm, I'm collected because I'm about to beat the shit out of this guy if he doesn't leave us. And that's when my friend is just like, hey, look, we have boyfriends, please leave us alone. And that's like the magic word, like the magic sentence you say is, I have a boyfriend and then they'll leave you alone. But like I said, saying I have a boyfriend is like the way to get rid of Ashton. Most of the time, because that reminds me. <laughs> I literally have not made a script for this. These stories are just coming back to me. But I was about to say, telling them you have a boyfriend will get rid of them. But most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, sometimes you'll have like really, really persistent guys. Like I had once upon a time. This story took place in <laughs> Thursday party. If 
there's any like Koreans watching or people who have been in Korea, you'll know about Thursday Party. And it's basically like the place for American soldiers, English teachers, and Koreans who speak English. So yeah, me and my friends went there. There was this guy who just came up to me and he wanted to buy me a drink. I know how this goes. I know that if I allow him to buy me a drink, I won't be able to shake him for the rest of the night because he'll feel entitled to my time. So I'm like, no, it's fine. Like, I don't need a drink. Like, you don't need to buy me a drink, blah, blah, blah. Turn around to go order myself a drink and everything's fine. Like 10 minutes later, he comes back up to me. He has a drink in his hand and um, wants to give it to me. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I have my own drink. I show him my drink. So we cheers and that's, that's it, as far as I'm concerned. So, um, for the whole night, he tries to talk to me, and me, as a, out of principle, I don't like telling people that I have a boyfriend just for them to let me, leave me alone, because I don't think me having a boyfriend should impact whether you respect me saying no to you or not. Like, I don't have a boyfriend, so why should I lie? Like, why isn't me saying, please leave me alone, not enough? Like, why? Like, do you guys understand this? Like, even though it would make things a lot easier for me, I nowadays tend to not say it. And these guys should, you know, leave me alone when I tell them leave me alone. But in this case, this guy is so persistent. I'm literally just like, okay, no, this is, this is the last resort. And I tell him, I have a boyfriend because he keeps asking me for my social media, my cacao, my phone number, and I'm like, no, my boyfriend, <laughs> oh, I hate this. But I'm like, my boyfriend doesn't like me talking to other boys. <laughs> Wherever you go, this really shows that he doesn't give a shit about you or respecting you. Whenever you say I have a boyfriend and they go, oh, it's okay, we can be friends. Like, how are you gonna respect me and my imaginary man like that? Like, no, you approached me in like a romantic way. We're not gonna be friends. Like, so for the rest of the night, he was like my shadow. Like, I turn around and he'd be there. I turn around and he'd be there. He'd be standing next to me, trying to talk to me. And at this point, I'm just like, feeling claustrophobic. I, I've told him many times, leave me alone. One of our guy friends actually joins us and I tell him what's happening and he's just like, okay, like, I'll pretend to be your boyfriend. So I'm like dancing with a friend, my little, I don't know, what I don't know what I want to call him, like my stalker friend is just like giving him evils from across the room. And we like split off because obviously he's not my boyfriend, like, at one point, I'm talking to one of my friends and my pretend boyfriend is like standing like three feet away from me. And again, my stalker friend comes over, tries to talk to me and I'm like, sorry, um, my boyfriend's right over there. <laughs> Which gives my friend the signal to like come over and be all like protective or whatever. I hate, I hate this. I hate that we have to do this as women. Like, but he comes over, puts his arm around me and I'm like, he. <laughs> And then I'm just like, I feel uncomfortable, so I'm gonna leave you guys to like bond over the fact that you just like think I'm a beautiful woman. <laughs> so I literally go away, leave them to it, uh, go speak to my friends. And then my fake boyfriend comes back, rejoins the group, and he's like, yeah, that guy's a, a psycho. And I'm like, what do you mean? The guy asked my boyfriend, can I dance with her? I've already told you I don't want to dance with you. I don't want to give you my number. I don't want anything to do with you. But what do you think is appropriate? Ask my boyfriend for permission because my boyfriend is the only reason why I don't want anything to do with you. The audacity. But yeah, so these are like some experiences that uh, have happened that are kind of funny, kind of weird. They may happen to you, I don't know. Like for the most part, I've had really good experiences, especially now where I don't mind being rude to men who don't respect me. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not. 
Uh, also hit the bell notification to be notified every time I upload. So yeah, if you have like any requests on videos you want me to do, I feel more than happy to do those. And if you want to chat or have a question about Korea or what it's like living here or like a specific question you want to know, you can DM me. My Instagram's right here. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.